Hey there everyone, it's Kathy Champion and you're back here in my at my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stamping. I am an independent stamping up demonstrator located here in North Carolina, North Carolina and I reside in the city of Gastonia. So if you need a stamping up demonstrator no matter where you live, I can help you with those needs. I do videos probably two to three times a week. I'll put up a new video um, showing and showcasing so many of the beautiful Stamping Up products and how to use them. I'll also provide you with tips and tricks and techniques. So if you are uh, interested in Stamping Up, whether it being a customer or if you would like your opportunity to be your own demonstrator or do what I do and sell this beautiful product to other people, please contact me. Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please um, hit that subscribe button below and ring that bell and that bell will let you choose how you want to receive notification. Uh, if you um, click on all, then every time that I put up a video, you will get a notification sent to your phone, email, text message however you receive notifications for YouTube and that way you'll know that I've got something new. Doesn't mean you've got to go watch it right then. It will be there but you know that I have posted something new and then you can at your leisure you can come over and watch it. Also you'll see my host code pop up right there and if you will use that host code um, you will be entered into a drawing. Any size purchase will put you into the drawing I'm having difficulty. I have my um, Simply scoreboard sitting here beside me and it wants to misbehave. <laughs> so y'all were hearing me fight with my uh, scoreboard. But any size purchase will put you in the drawing for this Punch Party stamp set. Now this was um, uh, active during our last celebration, but this was, a get, this was a stamp set you could only get as being a host. And to be a host you had to have an order that totaled $300 or more and then it qualified you for the stamp set. But I'm giving this away to a lucky winner that will be in our drawing for the entire month of April. If you place an order with me, uh, your name will get into the drawing for this punch party. So just wanted to throw that out there and let you know that that's available. Today we are going to center in on the sweet ice cream stamp set and this adorable punch that punches out our scoop and our cone. So so cute, so neat, and I'm going to show you a technique that anytime you have a punch that, that punches more than one image, um, you can use this technique and it works great over and over and over. Okay, the first thing we need to do is cut our cardstock. Now I have gone ahead and pre-cut everything. <laughs> so I just wanted to do this so it wouldn't take so long for our video. Uh, I'm going to start with our card base, so let me pull out my card base first. And my card base is a piece of pool party that is cut, um, you know, is this pool party? <laughs> yes, this is pool party, and it is cut um, four and one fourth by 11, and it's scored at five and a half. And it's gonna be a card that opens landscape like this. So that's our first piece. Then you're gonna need some layering pieces, or mats as we like to call them. And I have two that I used the um, paper pack. And this is this paper is called the Ice Cream Corner Designer Series Paper. Beautiful pack of paper. This is one side, and then you've got that beautiful cone on the other side. We could have um, stamped it on that and punched it out. Uh, if you look, these are beautiful images. I mean, look at that Blackberry Bliss. Look at those little popsicles. So cute. That beautiful stripe. I love it. It's just a beautiful, colorful um, pack of paper that is so much fun to use. You've got all of those beautiful colors. It just, it just looks yummy. Look at that. And then you've got that little confetti piece that we are going to be using. All right, with all of that, uh, I'm going to get back to our pieces. These right here are all cut at, um, you're going to need three pieces, two pieces of your designer series paper, 
and these are all cut at four by five and one fourth, including a piece of basic white. So these three pieces are all uh, four by five and one fourth. And there goes that scoreboard again. I'm gonna bring him up in just a minute and then we're gonna get him out of our way. So those are three pieces. The next piece you're going to need is you're going to need a piece that is one and one fourth by eleven, and this is where we're going to score. Let's go ahead and do that and get that scoreboard out of our way. This is the Simply Score, and I love this scoreboard. It is so neat to be able to use this. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this here, and we are going to score. I love it because it comes with a tool that pops in. It's never out of sight because it snaps in right here, doesn't fall out, and it makes it so nice when we get ready to do our scoring. So our first score mark is going to be two and three-fourths, which is right here. Two and three-fourths, and then five and a half, and I have this right here on the five and a half, and then eight and one-fourth. And what this is going to do, it's going to give us an evenly distributed piece. And we're going to come back and burnish those down. But you can see that's like a little Z-fold. And we'll be using that. So let's pop my tool back in and I can get this piece put back over here out of my way so it doesn't keep falling on my feet. Now we're also going to need four pieces each of our designer series paper and that's where I used a little uh, funfetti. I love that funfetti. And these are two and one fourth by one and three fourths. And you're going to need four of those. And then you're going to need four cut at two and one half by two. And what these are going to do, these are all going to layer on top of these solid pieces. So it's going to be three four of those, just like that. Um, anyway, this will layer on top of this, and this piece is two inches by three and three fourths, and this is three and a half by one and three fourths, and they're going to layer just like that. And then we have this piece that is one and one fourth by three and a half, so one and one fourth by three and a half. And this piece is going to be, <laughs> I got marks on the other side. This is going to be three and one fourth, three and one fourth by one inch. Yeah, by one inch. And that's going to layer right on top of this. And this is going to be for our greeting. And then we have our ice cream cone. And here is our cone. And I, did, I, I didn't get it perfectly straight in the, um, in the punch, but you know what? That's what we got scissors for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this just a tiny little bit right there and just a tiny little bit right here. Maybe just to make sure it's all cohesive, a little bit right there. And then we can throw this away. And that is ready to go. And I, what I did is in um, Blushing Bride, I stamped out one. And in Bermuda Bay, I did two. So I'm going to put Bermuda Bay and then the Blushing Bride and another Bermuda Bay. Just like that, and we're going to have a three stack ice cream cone. And I'm going to show you the best way to put all these pieces together. So, are y'all ready? Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and mat everything first. So, um, I'm going to show you how to put the ice cream cone together, and then I'm going to go off camera and mat everything, because I don't think you need to watch me. I will save the stamping for that, but on these ice cream cones, what I like to do is just take a glue dot and put right in the middle of that scoop, just like that. 
Can you see that? And then we can bring that piece to this one and put it on top. Then we can do the same thing on this one. We can come in right there in the middle of the pink one, the blushing bride, and we'll do one more and we'll stick it right here, just like that. Now on that bottom one, it's a little bit crooked, so let's pull that up and let's see if we can get that a little straighter. Yep, that looks better. And another glue dot right there. And then that's going to hold everything onto our cone. Now, if I measured correctly or got everything right, that's going to fit right on there, and it does. What I might do is put a little bit of glue right up under the edges of these and then, you know, kind of mash them down. I'll tell you what, we'll do that off camera. I'm going to go and glue everything together, and we'll be right back. All right, I'm back, and what I have done thus far is I have glued down these and this and my ice cream cone. So the ice cream cone is actually going to go in here, and we're going to pop that up on some dimensionals. These are our panels that are going to go inside on our little Z-fold, and we need to put another piece of the designer series paper here. Just like that, and I thought I would just come back and let you see how I put this together. Um, it's not rocket science, it's basically glue and, and paper and cardstock. So I got my glue there and I'm going to put this piece right about here. I like the liquid glue because it does give you, a, oops, a lot, sometimes a little bit too much wiggle room. That was a little bit too much, but it does work really good and it adheres well and uh, there's times I like to use the, the um, stamp and seal and then there's other times that I really like to use the use of my liquid glue. Now this piece right here we are going to um, stamp. So let's pull our stamp set here and let's put um, Let's put the um, Treat Yourself, Hope It's Sweet. And we're going to put that right at the top of this white piece. So let's treat yourself and hope it's sweet. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one over and put this one like right here. And let's see if we can get those lined up so they're nice and straight. Because what I would love to do is pick this up the one stamp block so that we can stamp everything in one shot and not have to come back. So I'm going to grab this larger block for this. And we're going to pick that up. I'm going to bring my stamp and pierce mat in because I am using photopolymer stamp set or photopolymer stamps. You're going to want to use this stamp mat, the stamp and pierce. So I'm hoping that I can get this nice and straight right up at the top. So I'm going to ink this up. And you know, I really feel like I need to stamp this on a piece of grid paper first. So let's try it right here. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. So I'm going to ink it up again. Again, this is the Bermuda Bay. And we're going to bring that right up to the top. And stamp it down. And up. Very pretty. So I'm going to get this big pad out of my way before I put my hand in it. And now we're ready to put this right here. So again, I'm going to grab my liquid glue. And I like to write my measurements on the back of my cardstock so that I can give it to y'all when 
as I'm putting the card together. And this side doesn't matter. No one's going to see this. So this is a great way to know what your measurements are. And I'm trying to match this piece up with the piece that's next door to it. And now we're ready to do our little fun fold piece. So we're going to put this a little bit to the bottom. And we're going to yeah, we're going to put some seal right here on this one. And I don't think I'm going to use the glue for this. I think I'm going to use some Stampin' Seal Plus. But I'm going to fold this because the only place, let me tell you what, let's go back and burnish these edges and make sure we get nice, crisp folds on this. That one looks good. What you want to make sure is that they're centering over top of each other. And if they're not, train your paper. Paper is trainable, believe it or not. You can manipulate and make your paper do what you want it to do. You need a good bone folder for that, but you can do it. And we're going to turn this around this way. And what I want to do is put adhesive right on this side. So, good old... Stamp and Seal Plus, and let's run all the way down. And let's do this side. And I think that is perfect. So what we want to do is come down right to the edge of that paper where you have about, let's put it on our grid. That helps me see. I'm going to come up about one half from the bottom, maybe three-fourths. Yeah, let's do three-fourths from the bottom. And I'm just going to stick that down right like that. Now we're going to turn our card and we're going to use our stamp and seal. Make sure we got it to the edge. And I'm going to run a piece across there, and here, and here. And now all we're going to do is close this card up on it, then press it, and then when you open it, your pieces are perfectly aligned inside, just like that. So now we're ready to center these pieces onto our um, little folds. So what I like to do is bring this one up, and you want to do it where these pieces are going to be perfectly aligned. And for that, I'm going to use stamp and seal right down the middle of each one of these, just like that. That way, when I put these on, I'm going to know that they're going to hold. They're going to be perfect. Just like that. And then we're going to do another one right down the center. You don't need adhesive anywhere but down that center. And I'm going to put this one right here. Those look good. And again, I'm going to do the same thing with these right down the middle. Now these are going to lay flat, so I might do just a little piece this way just to give them a little added security because they're not moving parts. So that's going to go. The main thing you want to watch for on this is that these pieces are on the same place because it will definitely show if they're you know, up or down, one's up, one's down, um, unless you want it that way. You know, you could put them you know, however you want to. Uh, for me, I need it to be straight, so I'm trying my best to get it. Oops, that one's not straight. So I'm going to measure it to 
to that one just like that. Probably a little overkill there, but hey, it's all right. So now we're going to put one right here. Do the same thing. I'm going to do my adhesive right down the middle, and I'm going to turn it and do one piece down this way. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to set this in. Just like that and press that down and now we can work on our front. Now this piece right here, this was our two, uh, two by three and three fourths and then we layered it with the piece that was one and three fourths by three and a half. And this is going to go right here on the side. Love that. Before I put that down though, I'm going to go ahead and put my ice cream cone on here. And I do want to put just a tiny bit of glue up underneath the edges of this. So much better and now we're going to use some of our Stampin' Dimensionals and that is these goodies right here. Love, love, love my Stampin' Dimensionals because they hold everything in place. They give you a little pop to your project and they're fun. They're fun to use. So one down here. And now let's grab our little take your pick tool because this is my favorite tool for lifting these off. This little picker is so great for so many things. Your die cuts, you can move little gems and jewels and get them exactly where you want them. So we're going to pop that up right about there, right in the middle of that. And now I'm going to take some liquid glue and I am going to just swirl some all over this piece and we are going to put that down right there just like so. Now the only thing we got left to do is our happy birthday. I love this happy birthday. It is so big, so beautiful and look it's going to fill in this piece right here all the way across. So I'm going to bring my, my little pad back out, my little stamp and pierce mat, and got my grid paper. Hopefully this will help me get it nice and straight. Who knows? We are going to stamp this also in the Bermuda Bay because I want everything to be cohesive on this card and beautiful. And look, y'all know I cannot do anything without getting ink on me. I just stuck my whole, my whole side of my thumb right into that ink. <laughs> I, I wonder sometimes if y'all are like that. Do y'all get ink all over you like I do? It is just the nature of what our game. And you know what? It's okay. So we got inky fingers and inky thumbs and whatever. It's fun. So I'm going to stamp that right there just to make sure I'm getting a beautiful image and oh my goodness is that not gorgeous. I'm going to ink it up again. This is what I love about our ink pads. They stamp so pretty. First time every time and that is always the beauty of Stampin' Up! products. They work so well effortlessly. Um, you know, and the misconception is that stamping up is expensive. I mean, $7.50 for an ink pad, I don't think that's bad. Look how big that ink pad is. I mean, it's, it's as big as my hand. 
So, and not only that, it's a storage system that stores your ink upside down. So the ink always moves down to the bottom or the top of your ink pad. And you get inker, you get reinkers for these. You can buy reinkers, which is great. So once it's an investment, once you buy that stamp pad, you won't, you'll only have to spend three seventy five to for your reinkers, and you'll always have these colors. And our basic neutrals, regals, subtles, and brights are always the same. The cardstock. They're staples. They're always there. The only thing that ro rotates out is our end colors, and every two years we get it, or every year we get a new set of colors because you keep a set for two years, and then the following year that one rotates off, and you get another one that's good for two years. So they're constantly; those are constantly kind of rotating around. But you know what? I love it. I absolutely love when we get our new colors. It's exciting, and it's. I don't know. I just love stamping up so much. And you have to love your products in order to sell them. And the reason I love them so well is they're good quality products for the money. Not as expensive as everybody says. I think the misconception is because they are such good awesome products, people automatically assume that they're expensive when in actuality they are not. So we are going to bring this over and let it nestle right there. And I'm going to put that straight down with some glue. And that's going to go right there, just like that. Oops, once the wiggle, it's that beautiful wiggle room. And now look at this beautiful card. Now you can come back on these little panels and put a piece of white and stamp some sentiments. What would be really cute to do with that is a piece of cardstock. Stitch so sweetly, I think, is the one I had in mind. And I was thinking maybe something like this. And maybe not on all of them, but just a couple. Oh yeah, see that would fit on there beautifully. Let's cut a couple pieces of that out and see what it looks like. And we can stamp some tiny little sentiments like, you're so cool, I think that might fit on there. And maybe we can do some sprinkles, we'll see. I'm gonna run this through real quick and cut a piece and see how it looks. And this is just taking your cards up to, enough, to another notch. Um, definitely not something you have to do. But I think that it makes um, a nice little statement. Look how stitched these are. Oh, they are darling. Love, love, love these. Stitch so sweetly does. They are the bomb diggity. So let's run this through. And... That one. And let's see, what else can we put? We could put little strips and we'll see. Let's see what those look like first. Let's decide what we want to stamp on those little pieces. And let's look this up and down. About you melt my heart. That is cute. And that will definitely fit in there. So we're going to stamp that and I'm going to grab that Bermuda Bay again because again I want to keep everything as cohesive as I possibly can. Move my card up there. Need another stamp block and let's see this one will work. stamp that right there. Yep, I love it. And you melt my heart. So cute. And then we're going to get another one. And 
And how about you're so cool? Get it on the stamp block going the, the correct way. Love, love, love the way these are stamping. They are great. And I could not be happier with this new system that Stamping Up is doing with our photopolymer stamps. Okay, let's bring our card back over. We've got our two pieces. I'm going to close this up, but I'm not going to put it away yet because we might want to do a little something. Let's put this one here and this one here. You're so cool. You melt my heart. So I'm going to do these directly down, and I'll tell you why because this is going to be the inside of the card and we don't need any more bulk. So we're not going to put these on dimensionals. If it was on the front, I definitely would put them on dimensions, but they're not. So I'm going to lay this one in right here. And this is just taking full advantage of that stamp set. Let's see if we can, oops. That did not want to hold, did it? You know why? <laughs> because these are made to go out and not in. And I was trying to press it in. So a little bit more glue right here. And then we're going to put this right about there. And press it in. And I think I'm going to leave the two on the outside plain. This card is done. And how stinking cute that is that card. I love the way it turned out. And I think it is gorgeous. And, you know, you could do this particular card layout for any paper, any design, any sentiments that you might have in your stash. But isn't it cute done like this? I'm going to zoom y'all in and let you take a closer look at this beautiful card. Isn't that super cool? And the recipient can set it up like this and see the inside. I love this. It, is, it turned out phenomenal. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you would try something like this. And if you want to pick up any of the supplies that was shown in the making of this card, please hit that um, button. It, it'll be a link listed below, and uh, it will say shop. And you can go to that, that link and shop at my online store. I would love to help you out with all of your stamping up needs. You, you would need this ink pad. You'd need some pool party and some Bermuda Bay paper. You'd need the stamp set, the sweet ice cream bundle. Make sure you get the bundle. You'll save 10% getting the uh, stamp and the, um, the stamp set with the punch. Let me zoom you out a little bit so you can see everything. There's the stamp and the punch. You would need at least one or two uh, stamp blocks for that and maybe some glue dots and some of our liquid glue. And I think the, and the dimensionals, I'm sorry, the dimensionals. And this is the template, no, that wasn't the template. Here's the template that I made. And all I've done was taken a piece of square cardstock and I went up using my punch. I pushed it all the way in like that and punched. And then when I brought it out, I put top and right. So I'll know that this is the top and that's the right when I get ready to do my punch. Then when I'm ready to do this, and I did this like that, I laid it down on top of my white cardstock, and I used this to for my stamp. I made sure that I stamped the ice cream scoop right there and the cone right there. And then when I put that up on my piece of paper, it punched out perfect without any waste whatsoever. 
So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that this will give you inspiration. And uh, again, like I said, don't forget, $50 purchase and you'll get a free gift from me. You never know what that free gift might be. So uh, go ahead and uh, go to my store and do some shopping. God bless and keep you all. It is my prayer every day for safety, good health, and be prosperous. And as I always say in closing, let everything you do and say bring glory to our Father in heaven. He is so worthy. So until we craft again, God bless. Bye-bye.